Welcome to Toffee TV. It's the final word, Everton 3. Oh. Chelsea won. Won. The final word where we won. Won again. Won. Joined by Steve Kelly, one of our patrons. Um, it feels, magical. It magical. feels good, doesn't it? It feels, it feels more than good. It feels um, genuine. Like a genuine... Good thing, what's happened over the I weekend. mean, before we start, I apologise for... I missed his birthday yesterday. <laughs> and yeah. I'm just doing it in front of everybody, so I apologise. I apologise. <laughs> I even know in my mind... Hey, it's not your fault, you knew when my birthday was. I even know it's December the 8th and I forgot it. I mean, forgot there's it. nothing... Anyway, back to the... I apologise, oh, yeah, back to the on, gate. Let's quickly move, move on. on. No, I mean, listen, it was... Um, it was... It was I was quite nervous going to the game. <clears throat> I was quite nervous for Duncan. Yeah. yeah. I just I, I know how many people have written him off and I've seen comments over the last few days about he should have gone and and um and uh, what's he ever done as a coach and uh, you know uh, listen we've had we you know we've we've we had the the, the the interview with Duncan obviously where I think he expressed a lot of things and so it was it was very very nervous for him. Very yeah. very nervous and I seen the team I wasn't that worried about Chelsea, and then I seen their team and I seen our team, and suddenly I become more nervous <laughs> because I just I, and, and don't get me wrong, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't like sitting there going, oh, why has he picked them? I probably thought, well, he's probably picked yeah. what he's picked, but that's all he's got. Right. So if that's all he's got. I think we're just a bit unsure how it was gonna. Yeah, the team was gonna line yeah, so, up. But I was just four, nervous. Four, for three, him. Four, I was three, nervous three. for him as a human being. Yeah, it was it's a big opportunity yeah. for him, and I didn't want to see it get not get wasted. That'd be the wrong way. Just things being out of his control. But after five minutes with the score, and I think that really settled everyone down. Yeah. And it gave us something to hang on to, and and it, it ended up being an absolutely brilliant day, and ap and showing you what what we've all missed. And it's weird because sometimes you miss something for so long, you forget about what you miss about it. You can't yeah. put your finger on what you miss about it. Definitely. You can watch videos and all that kind of thing, but you forget why you why you love going the game yeah. and why you love certain teams and certain players. Because other people don't give you that feeling, but you can never quite understand why they don't no. give you that feeling. And Saturday brought the feeling back of of why we love Everton and what we love, what we want to love about Everton and what we want from Everton. And it ended up just being a, a near that well, was a per perfect day in terms of Everton. Nothing else really matters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think we just we got our got ourselves people have been talking recently a lot about things like identity mm. and soul and all those kind of things and I think on Saturday you know Duncan Ferguson reminded <clears throat> a lot of people about Everton and what's special about Everton and why we why we love him as yeah. well Look, I've seen a lot of this he's not a legend he's not this he's not that he reminded people why we love him in the first place why we loved him as a player um, and it was it was brilliant absolutely absolutely been buzzing since and it yeah. showed you as well if you play with that level of performance in terms of hard work. And I, I've, I sit here every week and I listen to stats and expect the goals and all this stuff. And I know it's important, but I've mm -hmm. always said it. If you do not run through brick walls for your football club, none of it matters. It just doesn't matter. You can mock people like Sooness when they're on Sky and all this, asking for effort. But, they're, but he's absolutely right and people like him are right. All this nonsense about formations and, and um, all the new things that have come to football, they're great, but you've got to have hard work. Yeah. Systems don't work without graft. Nothing works in football without graft. And I think on Saturday we proved that. I, I've got to say that. Avon, I mean, we had them in the other week and I said straight away, I want them to be you in did, charge. Yeah. I want them to be in charge. I listened to him, sat with him off camera for two hours and talk football with them and tactics and blah de blah and I was like I want him yeah. and then when he's given the chance going the game I was like oh my god it's real now yeah, yeah. so it's sink or swim time because he's he's there with the you know on the side of the pitch yeah. and it was I seen the team and I'll be honest when I seen Sigurds in, in the team I was yeah. like oh dunk <laughs> no no then two in the centre of the park well, I mean what did you when you seen the team Steve what did you think uh, I was a bit worried mm. in relation to because didn't know I was going to set up. I wasn't mm. too sure yeah. if it was going to be a four-three-three, a four-five-one, or, or, and then when, yeah. it was, when I saw Richarlison and Dominic Carvalho standing mm. basically side by side, okay. Everton on the app had put four-four-two. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah and on the Sky yeah. app it was four-four-two. Yeah, so, but that it, doesn't mean anything normally. It doesn't. Yeah. I mean, there's times where we've seen the yeah, season four-three-three, yeah, yeah. and then it's been a four-five-one. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? So. 
Um, when I saw the team, uh, obviously we missed uh, Mina at the weekend. Yeah. He didn't start and uh, give Michael Keane a chance to come in. He was fourth done all right, second half, to be mm. honest, if we had the shaky uh, first half. But just going back to what you two were saying there about Dunk, seeing Dunk, it was like, it was one of those surreal, wasn't it? It was just, it was like I, I don't know the, I don't know the man. Never mm. spoke to the man in my yeah, life, yeah, but yeah. I was just so proud for him mm. and his family and mm. everyone connected to him because I thought I texted my mate after the game and said that's what it means to manage Everton. Mm. That's what it yeah. should mean to manage Everton football club. To represent Everton, not yeah. just manage Everton, yeah. represent Everton. Yeah, he was like, was like having one of us on the sideline. It was. I said, felt, I said it was like having it was a fan all yeah. the time, but it not. But in, also in a in a way where he was doing well for the team as well. Where yeah, he, yeah. Thought, I I think Steve, and this is where it's been lost, right? Is that I think genuinely people think he's there as a token, mm. like mm. it's this yeah. nepotism or something. Like mm. honestly, and the t- like Baz just said, the time he spent off with them off air, yeah, which it's very difficult to talk about because you, we we not we can't really you can't it's, talk it's, about the personal it. conversation yeah. with them. We can't like. Discuss it on here what we were talking about. Yeah. But his ideas and how and and how he wants to put his ideas into practice, you know, Baz is right. You, you you know you you can't be you can't help but be impressed with the man. Even when you saw him, you know when you talk about you listen to him after the game and saying he thought having two up front would benefit us and benefit with mm. and him. Yeah. Having the midfield and getting men back and and all those kind of things and he knew we could get in a fullback. He. He's all, he's all, you know, he said when he got the job, he said, I went and watched videos of Chelsea straight away, as much as I could, to just prepare for the game. Yeah. And as I said, I think people just think it's this guy who's going to turn up. I love the fact that he was wearing a suit as well. Little things like that to, to differentiate yeah. who he was to what he is as the manager. He's the manager, he's the manager for this game. Mm. He wears a track, he just looks like, he, looks like yeah. he is every week yeah. and people might be fooled by that. But wearing a suit suddenly... You know set who's in charge, yeah. He set him apart from everyone else, and that was important. I think he got all those little things right, and I, I can only imagine what he would have been like in the dressing room, talking to people, geeing people up, um, asking them to do things. We've seen, I know we're going to talk about Dom, Dom in a little bit, but you could see from Dom's performance the difference in asking, adding that aggression, yeah. Few, and it and it's it's it was very Dom last season. I thought I think I messaged you yeah. a week ago or so. You mean, so. When, you mean you mean last season when? Towards the incident when Duncan was coaching him, yeah, yeah. Him, yeah. I think that, exactly. That, yeah, Before he got I think I messaged. Line. I think I messaged uh, you, Pedro, a couple of weeks ago, and said, "Do you feel like Dom's lost his aggression a yeah. bit from last season?" Because I think he has. Personally, I think he stopped running for the for the the balls that maybe he wouldn't have got last season. Mm. I think he's mm. he looks like he's lost a bit of that hunger this year. I thought, but mm. Saturday was like he was playing against when he was playing against United and mm. Arsenal at the end of last season. But even better. I think that just comes from your instruction from your yeah. manager. But I thought what I thought was really good was a the atmosphere yeah. before the game when we, we sat here last week and we were, we didn't know whether Marco would still be in charge. Maybe like well, if he is still in charge, the atmosphere would probably. But the atmosphere would have been flat, <laughs> wouldn't it, or or whatever. But because they'd made the change and it was dunk, thought the fans bought into it. I mean. And playing Duncan Ferguson song, yeah. I don't think they needed to do that. And the Gladys Street had already started it, but but it all it all helped. And I thought we started with a good tempo straight away, and that was yeah. important as well. It was was quick. We were quick into the tackle and pressing immediately, and that kind of created that like yeah, definitely. What you said crowd. before, like when Moyes was here, some of those big games, that anticipation from the crowd right from the off, and they were hunting the ball, hunting they? the ball straight yeah, away, crazy. and you see that with the goal. You see that we don't let Chelsea out. We put yeah. pressures on the ball. We get it back. Yeah. Sigurdsson knocks it in. It's a lovely yeah. little touch by Dom. That's a lovely goal. To the Charleston. And I'd, really I'd, I hadn't realised at the time the Charleston was the one who played yeah, yeah. it wide. And he, he knocks it wide. And Sidderby, who I thought was incredible at the yeah. weekend, puts a brilliant cross. And that header was very well, good. You know what? What, what was great about that, uh, that goal was it emphasised the importance of having two strikers. Two strikers or, yeah. or even having. Richardson How many was, men we had in the box when yeah, the cross went exactly. four, 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 yeah. Um, it was more like a Richardson played more as like a split striker, yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. which was really important because his hard work never got lost. Then mm. it was always between him and, and Dom, but it showed you a cross coming in. Dom's in there, Theo's in there. It's again, it shows the importance of having a full back cross because it allows mm. your winger to come inside. And a Wobie well. was coming in now. Wobie coming around the back. Suddenly you've got loads of men in the box. 
But they're all f- focused on 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 Dom because he's mm-hmm. the centre forward. But Richarlison, yeah. and this is what we've been talking about for ages, is having a number ten who comes into the or having a split striker who comes into the box like that. No one tracks. Mm-hmm. He was essentially playing the Tim Cahill role. Yeah, you can't track that run. The man who's in the in the other, other dugout made a career out of it. Mm. Frank Lampard, yeah. you can you don't track those players. You can't track those players. No, and that's what Richarlison did brilliantly. He just followed them, and he, in the end, he's got a free header. Yeah, because all they do is mark and their men, and no one's gone with Richarlison. He's popped it off, and I think that's that's really int- what's really interesting. Again, again, I think this shows the, the the difference of having Duncan Ferguson in a senior position or someone like that in a senior position rather yeah. than just being a coach. Because when people say just a coach, it is, you're just a coach. You just do what you're asked. When you've got a job as the manager or the assistant manager, you suddenly have power then. You suddenly can go to the manager and go, have you been watching my child and what he does or or mm. whatever? We need to play two up front. Don- Duncan says that as a coach. I don't think he listens who's ever in charge. Yeah. I think as an assistant, he does listen or he's the manager, obviously. And I think as a centre-forward, he knows that. He knows the importance of having other men around him. Mm. And Dunk's probably been sitting there maybe four or five years, probably going mad because of playing one up front. And the first opportunity he gets, he looks at it and thinks, we've got two players. We, it's not, it's not a, we've, how many times have we said it? It's not necessarily the player playing up front. It's the fact that they're up there on their own yeah. and the twi- the tw- the, everyone else is 20 yards behind them. And, and suddenly having two up front... And Rich, I, 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 I think Richarlison's the perfect player to play that because he's got the energy to get back as well. That first goal was brilliant and it settled everyone down. It lifted us up again. It got it got it got um, give us something to get behind, um, you know. And 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 it was it was a perfect start, but a lovely goal, lovely goal. Brilliant, brilliant in front of goal, Richarlison, isn't he? Well, that's where he's at. Looked at his stats as well. He's like fifty-seven goals. Got sorry. 57 appearances, 22 goals. Mm-hmm. It's not you get him close to the three. goal. You get him close three, to so. the goal. He's a he's a real threat. Seen that in the last doesn't games. doesn't cross it. Doesn't dribble past people. Really, he's power running. Yeah. Get him in front he's of a goal. Fifteen to twenty goals. Definitely. All his, his last three goals, three goals in three games, all exactly the same. Yeah. Mm. Ball goes wide. He comes in late because mm. he's not. He's a, he's he's a little bit more tucked in, or he's coming off the side, and. He gets no. He's un, He's been un, he unmarked against Leicester. He's unmarked against Liverpool. Liverpool he's unmarked yeah. against Chelsea. Yeah. They, they, that's not. That's not bad. That they're three. No, yeah. Three of the three of the top four. Mm. And he's come in like that, unmarked and powered the mm. powered into the net. Yeah. So that's and the, he scored the winner of the Southampton. So that's suggest, yeah. coming exactly. in off a cross yeah. again. So that suggests that this this lad, you know, if you give him the time and the space. And and play him off the striker, then he he's going to score goals. Mm. He's going to score plenty of goals. And yeah. he, he well. Listen, he's our best player. Simple as that. He's our best player. I agree. And and he's our biggest goal threat. Mm. But to score goals, for anyone to score goals, you need assists, and you need other people making runs off them. And I thought I thought that goal was was really really good. Something you can go back on and go. You know what? Yeah. We 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 did Walk all right. We did all right. And I thought what we did after that then was kept the tempo. We kept our shape. Yeah. I thought he. I mean, obviously, we've seen the celebrations <laughs> with Duncan. Um, Running down the thing, and I know people will have seen me in particular bemoan and clop <laughs> at times. And yet, I did enjoy Duncan doing it the weekend, and it was such a night and day from our previous few incumbents, really, not just Marco, you know. But I will say, I'd probably get bored of that if it was every mind you, don't be scored every week, yeah, exactly. I probably yeah. wouldn't, so I don't, so maybe I am. If we win difficult. every week, I'd, I'd but um, it was, I mean, it was great to yeah. see him mean, yeah. running down with that shoot on. But I thought what we did really well after it was made sure we got back into shape, yeah. Um, he was up encouraging, screaming, shouting, encouraging the crowd. And this is what something me and you said last week about the next manager. I don't know whether you'd watched it, Steve, but we were talking about managers and we were saying, like, obviously, Silver's a good coach, but. Is he a bit? And we, I think it was when we were talking about Eddie Howe, who lost again at the weekend, by the way, Everton. Yeah. So you know, um, being able to take on the crowd at Goodison, mm. being able to do yeah. that, where are you? And Duncan's that bigger personality oh, yeah. that he can do that. Moyes did it, you know. I, I mean, Allardyce should do it, but he'd done it all wrong. But he was bit, yeah. so. I think for Everton manager yeah. and Stan Collymore actually said this the other day about Eddie Howe. He said he'd be eating alive at Everton. Oh yeah, he he'd, he'd wilt so. 
it was it was good to see Duncan rousing. The I think crowd, I think well. Duncan feel when the nerves were like getting into a few people. Probably the stage, he was nervous think, as well, and he was doing the whole say, yeah. come that, on that, and stuff like that. First someone like listen, you've just mentioned the running down the line and all that. He mm. he, he wouldn't be like that every no, time. No, of course relax. he would. He'd, 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 it well, changes, he'd, doesn't he'd, it? He'd, he'd relax and, yeah. and he'd have a he'd, he'd have a little bit more bit of calmness yeah, about calmness. And I think that things like that. He knew how important this game was, and he was just throwing it back to the crowd and saying, "Come." Yeah. Keep this we need you. We needed you as well. No, what was good though, what was good is about the team as well, the four four two, it it settled a lot of people into into their roles. Do you know the way Sigerton can go missing in the number ten? Mm, yeah. Or Schneider can go missing playing in front of the back four or or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. On Sunday on Saturday they couldn't go missing. No. Sigerton and Schneider had been given a job to do. And it was up and down and up and down and get behind the ball and get behind and that was it. And it wasn't like get on the ball and do this yeah. and do that. It was get behind the ball and when you get the ball, move it on. Mm. And that's all you need to do. And I think that simplified a lot because when they came back into it, we went after they scored, they were putting a hell of a lot of players yeah. forward. They mm. break Chelsea break were, quick. The, don't my you? thing was Chelsea played well. Mm. And they broke with so much speed. And Pulisic kept on trying to do that out to in. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was on the right-hand side as well. And Sidibe's going up the pitch a little bit and you can see him and you start to worry. But it just never quite fell for them. No. Never quite fell. But when it did fall for them, we got enough men back behind yeah, the, ball the ball that we just closed it out. Mm. And we caused... Even when they scored, you know, it... <sighs> It, 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 you know, it, it's one of those goals that really should never go. It no. should never go in, really, because mm. we'd done... And listen, it wasn't a great clearance, but we'd done most of the hard work. So in terms of getting behind, men behind the ball and then and then moving the ball quickly, it, it, you know, it was, it, was near, it was a near perfect executed game plan. As mm. basic at times like it seemed and as basic as people probably try and make out it was. It was it was nearly executed perfectly because we didn't we didn't need to have all the ball, you know we didn't need to, they I think they ended up having seventy percent of the ball. That's fine. That's what we wanted. Mm. We wanted to be we so wanted play in the counter we attack, wanted to play in the counter attack or or you know play direct and and have the ball in their half because at the end of the day all that mattered was scoring goals and winning the game. Nothing else mattered for this game. And that's that's the that's what I've been saying in the last week and that's why I've been talking about being worried about this side it's the realisation that it's not about anything else but yeah. winning games of football and scoring goals it's like when is that penny going to drop and that's why I was slightly worried on Thursday when I'm hearing things about like Marco Silva saying uh, sorry Brand saying oh he wanted to keep him and things like that it's that idea that the penny wasn't dropping with people yeah. that we're actually we're not good enough to keep just floating along as we are and we need an injection of something mm. And I think what what it, what Saturday has shown is, and what what annoying I've seen all the names since, and I'm looking at going, did you not any of you's not learn anything from Saturday from what this club wants, from what mm. these players want, yeah. from how these play, how these fans respond, and and what gets actually what gets football is excited about playing football, mm. getting stuck in, getting getting the ball up quickly, scoring goals. Getting in for those 50 50 tackles and enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's about the tackles is ridiculous. It's, it is. Yeah. But that's ridiculous. Yeah. 37 it's tackles. The most tackles in a decade. In, uh, for Everton in, a decade. in the whole of the decade. Mm. The, was it the most this season? Most for anyone this for season. For anyone this season. It's quite what, worrying, that, isn't it? what, what that says is, is that tackling is going out the game. And it's one of those things that, like a lot of things in football, they fade out your memory and you forget why you used to love that. Mm. Games like Saturday. Tell you why you love that kind of thing, why Evertonians. If we always go back to it, we can. We'll like, focus on the manager later. We'll do a little bit on Dunk later, but just you know, they had a couple of really good yeah. news. Abraham William done a shoulder brilliant dummy to Dean yeah. and went on the outside, yeah, the and Abraham game, yeah. had a flick. They had the other one, the other side where Pulisic, fi- I think Pulisic mm. or Mason Mom fired it across, across, and he Holgate. almost got on. Yeah. Holgate made a brilliant block. Yeah, Luca yeah. Dean made a brilliant clearance. But Jordan Pickford was untested yeah. in the first half. They had, they did. I seen Lampard after it saying sometimes he tried to walk it in, and it felt like that in the first half. Yeah. He did, mm. but he didn't really carve anything mm. clear cut out. And he was quite critical of them at the end of the well, game. Well, he will be well, because he'll so. have been expecting to come here it's and, and it's win. But by a team in the bottom three, to mm. be one. True, yeah. you know, and I comfortably in a way, he away one, it well, as well. Yeah, but, but we did. So that's that's what happens, isn't it? So we got in at half time, one nil, stay, and then you're thinking. I around us we were like Dom's got to do a little bit more because yeah. he was he he started well and faded a bit. 
the truth, thinking he's got to get into Zuma and he's got to get into Christensen's second half. And it was like, they'll probably come on to us now because Lampard will get in and go, yeah. But again, I suppose this is testament to Duncan that we came out and we were straight back on it yeah. again. The crowd were up again. And we, you know, five minutes in, we make it 2 0. That early goal was so important for the game, mm. I think, because I think if we don't get that early goal, like you just said, then it's, it, 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 they probably put us on the back foot where mm. we put them on the back foot. Well, you're saying away. about a poor goal, but we, we go and chase the ball. Yeah. Watch the ball again. Yeah. Michael Keane, strong, Pressing, wins it ever. Yeah, that's what I mean. The we, ball. we force mistakes yeah. with that one. I meant more Zuma for, panic. I meant more for the last yeah. one. It was more than yeah. anything. You um, know, and. But Dom does so well, doesn't he? Goes up yeah, the air. He reads it really well yeah. as well, because I think maybe a week or two ago he might have not like anticipated mm. to, to go for that ball. But this week, obviously, working with Dunk again, which is probably going to help him again. Um, but I thought he took his goal away because he had one in the first half. Yeah, it was a lovely which little probably, move. Yeah, that. Which he, won, he won the he ball won back, it, like a little one-two. Yeah, but he just he should have took an extra shot. He just yeah. a bit timid when it. That timid thing about just getting it on target. Yeah. yeah, and he just he had he was up yeah. So he got chuck an extra touch. So I was happy for him because that first, the one in the first half, I hope yeah. it doesn't affect his confidence. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously he had that one, he tucked it away, brilliant he finish. Just it, in the, brilliant. Into the side, keeper had no chance. So. And then you have that minute, don't you, where the referee now goes and you go yeah, and, yeah. oh, behave yourself. And you, I'm I like actually trying to look at the so in front of me like that well, to he see. Bullied, you know. He bullied, as you just said, he called Zuma, I could make Zuma made a couple yeah. of mistakes there, bullied him into it. Yeah. He finished it brilliantly. Yeah, it was a great finish. No, great no, finish. didn't have to think about it. Finishes. I think he might, I think he's he's like that, Dom. Sometimes he's better yeah. when he doesn't need to think. Something. It's, it's games oh, and yeah. confidence Bullshit. and composure. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah. We, saw, we it, said that last week. You know, he finish, sucked yeah. that in brilliantly, and then you go, you know, dunks off again, <laughs> hugging the other ball boy this time, and we're all like, you know, limbs are everywhere, and the crowd are bouncing, yeah. and it's loud, and you're thinking, oh my god, this, this is, is you, like you said before. I've missed this. Mm-hmm. It was you like know, I hadn't been in the game for five, it six was years. Weird. <laughs> it was weird, but it was amazing. And, yeah, it was great. You know, people around me are like, this is surreal. Duncan Ferguson's our manager. Know, the place is bouncing and we're winning. And then, we, and it wouldn't be Everton if there wasn't a little bit of what happened a couple of minutes later. Is that, like you said before, we they have a good little move, but we seem to get enough men yeah. in the way. We, we cover it well. well. Luca Dean. What annoyed me was this actually started. Um, like I was a bit, I was quite critical of OOB on my player ratings and yeah, I mean I, I, yeah, I people sit, people watch the game differently. I'm not gonna start saying no. you know, I there's things about it's his opinions. game that think about his game that I it just I, it annoyed me at times. Mm. But I generally like OOB, I think he's a cracking player. I just think that there's there's little things that might need to be added to his game yeah. for him to be a good player. But work rate was phenomenal on Saturday to be fair to. Yeah, but it, <laughs> work rate's work rate's great. And that's all we've been asking for. But again, it's that word you said there, that little bit of composure, a little bit of nouns. Mm. And this, it, it actually started mm. for their goal around the halfway line with a woe with a chance just to bring the players yeah. down. And he didn't. Mm. And and it, it's things like that that annoy me that may not annoy other people. But things like that annoy me. Because all I think is the ball ends up going 20 yards down the pitch and then someone does bring them down. And they're the things that really annoy me on footballers, mm. how they, they, they've got a lack of game management. And this is the thing that has annoyed me about Everton for a long time and annoyed me about Silva massively. And the Wobie actually has a chance to bring this lad down. And you just think, bring him down and just start yeah. again. He doesn't. The ball ends up going on the left. We don't deal with it on the left. It gets thrown in. It's it's not a great clearance, but we do enough. And he sweeps it back in first time. I thought personally he was offside. And I've not seen an angle yet that convinces me he wasn't offside. But I haven't seen an angle. And I, but I don't understand. That might just be me. I might, yeah. I might not have seen it, but I thought instantly he was offside because mm. you see, Pickford sort of looks and he takes a step and then he has to take a bigger step to try and get over to it. He doesn't like fully react to it, and there is a player literally standing now in line. Abraham's right in his line. Of now, again, I didn't see them drawing the line on or anything. They must have been fully convinced straight away. I thought it was. Offside. He comes from an offside position. He does, and then. Into players, the ball's kicked. Did he check it? Because I watched match. Check it, but I didn't think he checked it. I actually it watched match of the day for the first time in about five years. Last, on no, Saturday. I did, but I did, but I didn't see any of them drawing any of those lines. No, but he showed them as he kicked it. He's, he's, I, he's I, just I've a, seen. He's I've seen just people, ahead. I've seen people's backs yeah. be offside this season, Steve. I've sure, seen yeah. people's balls on their bollock sack <laughs> people being offside this season. <laughs> the fact that they didn't draw a line yeah. on that. Mm. And and he, he didn't look And he was in his way. He was in his right. way. No, he was in his like, way. But... It wasn't like it wasn't like he was he was he was like you could clearly see. Yeah. I, I thought I was surprised that he didn't check it properly. But anyway, 
I, I, I thought at the time Pickford could have done a little bit better. I did, yeah. And I'm still not... Because, again, it's the idea of well, where else would it have gone? Like... It was only going one way. It was weird the way but he put it back in though, because it was his instep, yeah, wasn't it? It was, was like yeah. I thought it was just going wide maybe and then it hit the net. It. Maybe he was completely unsighted. Yeah. Maybe he was completely unsighted, yeah. and that's fair enough. Um, but as you just said, then that just that just because it comes so quick, we just put the needed, doubt, didn't it? You just started. You just started thinking. Then these are going to go for another one out. Mm. You know, we've got to have we because we Wolcott had that one where he beat Kante, yeah. knocked it past them, mm. yeah, and. It's annoying because he's going towards goal and you know what he wants to do. He does want to pull it back, but Richardson comes back, but he doesn't come back enough. No. Yeah. If he just pulls, he almost stands with the defender yeah. Richardson. If he just yeah. come back a little bit more, he's got a side footer. Then Walker tries that again later on, and instead of doing the same thing, he tries to do that thing where he comes inside. Can't say, can't he just takes off? I thought there. can't say was magnificent, by the way, during yeah. the game. I thought, I thought he was. Um, but obviously the nerves, then you're starting to feel the nerves. Kepa did make a good save, though, from Walcott there, because yeah. he hit it well. It was a good, yeah. strong You're starting to feel the nerves around good. Yeah, they were getting a little it. bit close. And, and Frank Lampard's right, because they had a couple of chances. One way, if he just hit it on target, he probably would have scored, but he flashes it wide. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Listen, we got little bits of luck mm. that we haven't got this season. We've got little moments of luck. But if you're positive and the atmosphere is positive, you find you get that. That's what... We bemoan sometimes Liverpool, you know, the lucky and Le- what's Leicester and some of the stuff that goes for them this season. But that's because they're positive and yeah. they all work hard. I mean, the top two teams, City have dropped off a little bit at the moment. Well, they're poor at the minute. But yeah. the top two teams, as it happens at the minute, are, are hard working teams. Liverpool and Leicester, they, they don't mind a long ball. They don't mind mixing it. They work hard and they, and they beat teams. And that's what we were doing. And it was just that little 10 minutes after they scored, you're thinking... They started getting on the ball a bit more, and you, it, it wasn't what they were doing because I think Pickford only yeah, really had not, one save to me, and it, but it was yeah. going over anyway. Yeah, just yeah. seeing that out. Whereas, and you worry then about our mental state. You're thinking, are we going to crumble? But you know, Michael Keane started winning everything yeah, and Holgate yeah. shut them down. Abraham didn't have a, didn't have a chance in the game, and it's a lad that's got 14 goals this yeah, season. Man. And then Dunk, you know, made a couple of changes. You know, with the, mm. Tom Davis come on for the Charleston. And that was a bit of a shock because yeah. Dom was looking, even though Dom had really started putting himself about, he was looking a little bit tired. I thought he was going to take a Wobie off and put Richard. Well, I was thinking, it, yeah, oh, yeah, I was thinking, is he going to do that? But yeah. he didn't. He took Richarlison off, who, who didn't seem happy. No. But that's that's football. You don't want to be happy, do you? But I thought what was really good was Dunk didn't go over and give him the Al hug and no, kiss yeah, on. He yeah, didn't even look past, at him. He just yeah, went, you're past, off. Yeah. Bernard came. Eh, Tom Davis come on, didn't he? And he went up front. And in a, a number ten role, and, and he just started. Free, free role. Wasn't well, he was he getting. Out, he, yeah. What he does is he presses the ball really well, and he yeah. got on the ball a few times. He done some good stuff, and he done some stupid stuff yeah. where you're thinking, why are you doing that and making putting yourself in trouble? Walcott went off and and done really well. Done the Al. I've got cramp. I went down <laughs> and wasted a few minutes. But and... even that was lucky though, mm. because we wanted to make that sub before we scored the third goal. Yeah, mm. we did. And, yeah. it, and I don't know if it was for Walcott. We wanted to make a sub, and I don't know Keem. who it was. Well, it, Bernard and, and Keem are coming on. That's what I'm saying. So, so I don't know who was... It would have been Calvert-Lewin, saying. wouldn't it, because yeah. he was tired. I don't tired. think he was ever taking Calvert-Lewin. No, he kept, he kept looking over to the bench. Or maybe he was bringing... I don't think he was... Dunk maybe he was bringing Keane on yeah. for Walcott. Then. I don't think he was ever taking... Because Dunk he called he called Moise Keen back, and I thought he's yeah. coming on now. And that, even little bits like a look like that, though, mm. the fact that we didn't make that sub before we'd scored, and the fact that then Walcott goes down, and then we can we we haven't wasted a sub, do you know mm. what I mean? So there's little moments like that mm. that really went yeah. for us. In and the we game. still had, you know, Dean went down, and, and we had Baines yeah. to come on, didn't we? So we did have the rub of the green. Like Thought the saw, fans were, but terrific though. Even fans when it went to two one, yeah. even when it went to two one, there was no. Because but it just shows you though, doesn't it? Yeah. Shows fans you. will get behind yeah. you. Fans will get if they fans see you give them maximum effort. Yeah. And mm. and they're trying, they're, you're not doing, you're trying to do positive things and you're not doing stupid things. Yeah. Fans will get behind you, of course mm. they will. There's no. Well, at the end of the day, we say this all the time. Everton are not the best team by yeah. any stretch of a mile. But when you're playing teams like Norwich and you put in performances as lacklustre as that, they're going to get on your back and yeah. all this nonsense about, oh, you can't have a go at them and you can't have a say mm. this and you can't say that. Why, when they don't, when they can play like that against Norwich and they can play like that against yeah, Chelsea? Yeah. You know what I mean? It, they, f- players have got to understand that if they work hard, they work the bollocks off. They will get, they, you know, they will get everything. And you, you win games, you lose games. But if you lose games by working your absolute bollocks off, 
then there's nothing you you know no one can have a go at you, can they? Like I said, to, I think, sorry, like I said, it, sorry, no, like no. I said to you, but the Everton fans aren't are hard fans to please. They're really not. If you put in effort, commitment, and show a bit of aggression, then we are an easy fan base for you to get behind. Because that's all. We, let's let's think under Moyes. It wasn't the greatest football in the world that we've seen, but every every time you see them on the pitch, you knew the majority of the team were given a hundred percent every week, and that's what I saw on Saturday. I walked away and thought, you know what? Everyone walked off that pitch absolutely knackered, mm. and but that that's not been seen for me for a long that time. That has to be the, that's what I said before. The best yeah. two teams in the country yeah. at the moment are the hardest working. I think mean, we got the third goal, Dominic Calvert Lewin. I mean, Walcott's done absolutely yeah. brilliantly before he went off. He, he nicked the ball again and yeah. goes on a run, plays it into mm. Dom. Dom does well, holds it up, and then the back heels it. Yeah, but the third one, no, the funny thing with the third goal was. Is that we watch Pickford just punt a long ball downfield aimlessly and done yeah. it a couple of times, yeah, yeah. and people are like, "What are you doing? You at- why you don't do like twice? Like you're just giving the ball back to them, and then Kepa does the same thing yeah. straight towards." But Walcott's on Walcott's it. Walcott's on it. He's on it immediately. Dom actually had a go at Pickford. Dom yeah, turned around and went exactly. to Pickford. Using head. things like that's what I mark Pickford down for stupid things like that. Yeah. They're the little things that, and that's why I marked the wall down a little bit. It was that. It's those moments in games where people have all got to get on the right page. Yeah. You can put all that hard work in, but you can throw it away all in one go. You can kick it that hard, kick it to the corners. There's one, there was one in the second where he got it's like an old Sunday league yeah. kick. He was went like that, up but in the air. But he don't want in the first half too. Like, he was incredible off the side of his foot. Put him oh, no, yeah. But he just yeah. ran out of space. Oh. But uh, we do well, Don back heels. It's Tom Davis does brilliantly go double like touch round one. It just won't fall. But what I liked was Dom stayed alive. So when the thing went in, he just slides and, and we get, of course, again, another little rubber degree and it goes through the goalie's legs, but it's no more than we deserved. And, it's great thing you know, it's on though, wasn't it? it that was, was brilliant. It, and it just it was um, it was just a pity he couldn't get the shot away because oh. it would have you know, would have given him loads of confidence. He'd already yeah. had one where he broke into the box with the header yeah, and it got yeah. blocked. But, you know, to go three one up then with five minutes left, just the roof came oh, off yeah, and brilliant. and all of that. But Dominic Alderloon got his just rewards and just, you know, some of his um his stats from the game because I think we need we should look at it because he's yeah. criticised at times, Tom. And you know I've criticised him for not being in the right place he's at the good. right time. But at the weekend he was and he's done that better this season. He's had fifty touches of the ball at the weekend, which is way more than he's normally had. Uh, two goals out of six shots, it's not bad, you know. Yeah. Um, four shots on target from six, which is again the old adage is if you know you have five shots and you get one on target. I think the most the important thing is he's got. Not only the shot, the shots on target are huge. We criticise him a lot for um, not getting shots off. Mm. Criticise all our strikers for not getting mm. shots on target because we, we're all, we're we, it's the one th- we're so scared to shoot. Yeah, but he did, and I just think I thought his all round game was brilliant, and I thought mm. the fact that Duncan had obviously emphasised him, and you could see that must have happened at half time as well. Emphasised you're an Everton number nine now. Mm. You've got to start acting yeah. like it. It's not just a thing. And again, this goes back, doesn't it? Goes back to understanding what all these things. We spoke about it last week about having players who pass things on to the next mm. generation of players. And that, do you know mm. what? One of the reasons why I was made, made up Baines got on the pitch, and you can see mm. Dunk coming. It was like that idea of this is like old ever. Yeah, it's having that idea of someone like Duncan going over to Dominic and going, "Do you know what being the Everton number nine means? Do you know what it means to these people? Do you know what it means to everyone who's been a number nine? Go out there and be a number nine. He started bullying people. He, did, yeah. he got goals. He had a ladder. Um, <laughs> his six packs, unbelievable. Oh my God. Mm. I mean, I don't know whether he's been, touched it up on the old Photoshop, but mm-hmm. um, no, it, it was brilliant. But I mean, if you're having four, yeah. four of your six shots are on target, chances are you're scoring but at least one six goal. Shots. But six shots is a big thing. He from the front, didn't he, yeah. all day as well? Yeah. Every, I, I these strikers a, should always aim for five shots I a give him man of the match. I, I thought he was brilliant. There's one, there's one, the one B-box, even the one, uh, I think he hit one from about 35. Yeah, yeah, he's seen the keeper. Oh, he like slid, got the man, tried to cast the keeper out. I haven't really ever seen him have a shot. Confidence it's confidence. If you've got a manager who believes in you, you know, and says to you do this and do and he's been working with you and you see him when he scored the third goal he ran up to Duncan didn't yeah. he and he gave Dunk the hug but that was he that was, was there uh, 16 successful passes 9 successful attack and third passes chance one chance created good, which is good for him and a 62% passing accuracy 
compare that to Burnley away when I think he had something like eleven yeah, percent passing accuracy or something mm. and ten touches. Yeah. So, it was something ridiculous, honestly. Yeah. It was less than twenty percent. And so just a fantastic game where he he got like I say at half time, I wanted them to ruffle the the two centre backs up because I felt yeah. if we didn't do that, they would impose themselves more in the game. And the second half he did do that. He went yeah. and made himself a nuisance. He put tackles in, he won headers, he got his body in between people. And if you've got someone who's leading the line like that, everything else then mm. is a starting point for you. And you're after Charleston, like you even said, wasn't half, around though, him. Even in the first half, he um, gives one of their centre backs a crack on the chin with his elbow. Mm. So yeah. little things like that. Which, but he has got, he's got that side to him. Well. mentioned it. Yeah, did, I like to share mentioned it on Match yeah, of the Day. And, and he said about he's gone out and he's bullied them, mm. he pushed them over. Did you through, see that one where he pushed them? I was pushed like, them didn't over through their centre backs a couple of times. Literally just put. The ball's well, going he like, out the way for the one with the one two in yeah. the first half. But, he eases out though, the way. Even one, there was one towards the end where it was going out Still anyway, but he just made sure he made sure the ball and the lad went. Mm. And he yeah. just he just basically was he basically just was, <laughs> was just like, I'm what? Mm. You know what? Even if that ball that ball hasn't gone out, I'm gonna make sure I get it. And at that stage, it was like, well, I haven't been booked. Why not? Just I'll just show them. We seen we seen Rom do that a few times. I remember Rom after the derby once going, "You're not gonna bully me in this stadium with these mm. fans." And Dom needs to feel that. But um, and then just the final one of I mean, these eleven aerial yeah. duels, one against Christensen, who's six foot five or something. Yeah. Zuma, who you know we were chasing all summer, six ball recoveries again showing the work rate. It's on the front, two clearances. He's brilliant at that. At the, the, the near post away, and yeah, he and him and the Charleston, and he was fouled twice. Gave for me a proper number nine yeah. performance, was, um, very, very and it, it gives good. us. I mean, from one number nine to the other there, but it, it gives you, like I said, it gives you that starting point, mm. doesn't it? And it, he should have loads of confidence now. Yeah. But the thing is, with Dom. That's his level now. He's set that bar. Well, again, and though, he's got to go max. Again, that a lot of people will say, a lot of people are like, where was this Dom on, on, on um, Wednesday night, or where was this Dom against whoever else, or whatever. It, it comes down to a lot of the times these players are like robots. They okay. get given instructions, and once they go out, it's like the manager the other day saying, well, the ex-manager <laughs> saying, oh, I, uh, they didn't do what I told them to do, and, and it all falls apart. The manager has got to be respected enough. That the plan he sets out, the players go out and do that. And if it and if it doesn't work, then it falls on the manager. Yeah. Because it's their plan. You know, you've got to trust your manager that all week he works on a strategy and for it to work. Duncan has had a day and the strategy will have been four four two, we do this, we do that. Few little few little things to players. Trust Sigerton, trust Snyderman, because with the experience. Sigerton play uh, Sigerton plays four four two for oh, Iceland. Iceland. You know yeah. what I mean? He knows how to play the role. He knows how to do it. He plays <laughs> Iceland are, you know, they're a more more of agricultural side than anybody. He knows that what he needs to do, and he's asked them to do the job, and he's yeah. respected them as senior players to do that. You know, and they've done it, and they've done it. Which and shows he's asked, the respect for that. And he's it. asked a younger younger player to do a job. He's asked basically put Richardson in. And I think the position Richardson will probably want to play in every yeah. single week mm. on the ball more, can pick it up deeper, can run at people, can and score in the ball. He's allowed people to do what they want, but what he's not do what they want, what way they'd rather play. But all he's asked from them was, put a shift in for me then. Don't no, don't treat me like a dope. Put a shift in yeah. for me and for all these people. And Dom's responded. Uh, and I think, like he, Dom said, I set, went over and jumped on him because I wanted to celebrate with him because cause from he's day one he's been with theirs, yeah. been helping me. And um, I think that's important as well. I think it almost felt like they'd been... Let off the leash a little bit mm. on on Saturday. Well, one per I mean, talking about getting a reaction out of players, you know, one person who I thought he did get a massive reaction out was this fella, who apparently was ill yeah. before the game in the hotel, and he oh, was unsure okay. he was going to play. And you know, I gave him man of the match for me because I thought he was absolutely magnificent. Another assist. He was up and down. Okay, sometimes he's positionally, are you know not in the right area, but that's what you get from attacking fullbacks. Yeah. I look at Liverpool's who yeah, were who definitely. were two brilliant attacking fullbacks positionally, they're woeful, you know, but they're amazing going forward. And he's been un- incredible for us, I think he really has for considering what he gives us and, you know, taking off after what, twenty five minutes at Anfield or yeah. whatever it was the other night. I thought for him to and to find out now that he'd been ill yeah. throwing up before the game and then put in that performance it's shows that yeah. would have been easy for him. He's not an Evertonian. He's here on loan. It would have been easy for him to go, I can't no, well, play, I'm yeah. sick. And he played 71 touches, 
uh, an assist, 22 successful passes and 13 forward passes. He made three brilliant recoveries in the first half. He, he did, got yeah. people out of trouble three times. Do you know what I'd assist as well a couple of times? Snyder dropped in at right back when he went off front. When he went forward, sorry. He did, yeah. Cup dropped in a couple What's of times. What's someone thinking? Someone, so just some, going no, but the actual, Or maybe just they said that, that, yeah. Just thing of just dropping in mm. and, and being and in there. Stuck, making yeah. sure yeah. there's cover. Making sure there's cover. Mm. Someone just going, you know he's going to go forward. You know he's not going to get back. You know, he does try and get back, don't mm. get me wrong. But just someone having a brain and going, you need to just cover. Old-fashioned football. Mm. How it used to be. You oh go, my I God. Stay. You go, I stay. I blame the piv. Easy. I blame the piv. I, was like gonna say I, blame the I mean, one of the one of the things I thought was funny as well about that was he did he got cracked, didn't he, in our corner flag in, in injury time, and he went down and Pickford went over and just went to get up, just get he up. He was looking at the Chelsea. He was looking at to get yeah, the, the Chelsea fans. Went, the Chelsea went, no. fans like yeah. going mental because, but like, it, it come back to what you said when at Anfield, not Anfield, Leicester yeah. away. I was thinking, oh, don't do another less than no. away. Get up quickly, no. now. Now so Pickford pulled them up. Pulled he, them up he, he was did, he had yeah. been caught, but he, you yeah. know we got on with it and. You know, he's so direct, isn't he? With the ball, he's, just, he's so strong. What he is is right. He won the ball, cup, sorry, he won yeah. the ball a couple of times. Yeah, in their half as well, though. Yeah, like like recovered like, the ball, recovered yeah. the ball, and so and because obviously we push him in forward, and he just broke that up and mm. allowed us to keep going. Yeah. So he, he he carries the ball with aggression, doesn't he? When yeah. he carries it, it's not and like he's, he's a good passer of the ball. And he's, he's, he's good at actually keeping the there ball. There was just one well. where he stole it off. Their left back, he and he should have just given it to the Charleston, yeah. and he didn't. He waited and then gave it to Dom. But it, by the time Dom had got it, because he had to wait, the chance yeah. went where if he just rolled it off for Charleston, would have got a shot. Three assists in the last. It's a great four, ball for the goal. Four, five, get five yeah. games. Sorry, it's a yeah. brilliant so ball. He's, 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 I mean, he's that's flying, more than, isn't he? I don't know how many Coleman's assists he's got in the last. Mm. But it's, it's. I'm not having a go with Coleman here. What I'm saying is, is that this is the modern, the modern right back. Mm. Coleman was a, yeah. was was one of the. He was like Absolute a pioneer, pioneer for it, wasn't yeah. but, but, you know, you've got someone strong and physical and Troll. get up and down. Um, that and wasn't an easy cross to put in as well, because he's, he's, as he's running, he's he's had to come back in to cross because he crossed the first. Nah, he's, he's a danger. He's he's just, he knows what he's doing, and they know, from, they know from that area to do it. I suppose, like, obviously, we win the game 3-1. Um, and so, I suppose, you know, dunks on the pitch, the crowd bouncing, we've, we've got a massive win. <laughs> Joe's asked the question here, should he be in charge for Man U away? I mean, let's go to Steve first. What yeah, I think, think? I think the club have got to take the time with this, this, this next appointment. And I think Dunk's <laughs> given them a bit of, he's given them a bit of, um, bad, bad in the time. Mm, in bit relation. of breathing space. Bit of breathing it, space, yeah. I think. If we'd got beat on, on Saturday, I think the whole, the crowd would have been like, oh, we need someone now, now, now. Yeah, but yeah. I think the way the players reacted to Dunk on Saturday, um, I think how the crowd got behind them, which we all knew was going to happen anyway. Um, uh, this is this is a crucial appointment they make next. It mm. is. I know we keep saying it every time we have another manager, but the way the way we feel as fans, as we did on Saturday, we want to feel that all the time. We want to, yeah. but it's so important that they just don't bring someone in just for the sake of it because he's a name, yeah. or just because he's got he he plays this great tactic tactician football it's got to be the right fit for Everton not everyone keeps saying it's got to be the right fit for the players it's got to be the right fit for everything not mm. just the players the whole club as well yeah. I, 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 all the names that have been bandied about they don't really are mad me, yeah. because loads of them are just are like contradictions of the other ones which yeah. I don't I can't I, I, and it, it makes me worry about what's going on yeah, off the pitch too, yeah. it really does yeah. and, and it's been mentioned loads and can't it can't it, you know lo, I've, I've looked at loads of journalists and loads of really proper journalists over the last few days and a lot of words they keep on saying and things like factions and mm. who's in charge and this plot man and it and so it's got to be there, got to be real. I think what Duncan did at the weekend was show, like I've mentioned before, what we respond to as a manager, mm. a manager, and what we expect from our team. And I think we've had so long of our players not given that that we've complete, like I said before, completely forgotten about yeah. it. And. My only worry is that if he's in charge at Man United and it doesn't go the way he wants it to go, or the way they they come they've come into a bit of form, mm. is that we almost lose this sort of perfect day or whatever. I don't know, but you know what I mean. It's like mm. you, you you'd need a little bit more going to Old Trafford, and I'm not saying he couldn't give that little bit of more, but it wouldn't just be about emotions because it's it's away from home. It'd have to be a little bit more. There'd have to be a bit bit more of a game plan. 
I don't. I think what the club have got to do is stay whatever whatever track they were on. Mm. They've yeah. got to stay on that track and not suddenly go. Oh, it'll be all. It'll be off. It'll be no. fine because yeah. they've got to stay on that track. Mm. But you came in before and you were saying saying all oh, that that you know. I don't think Moyes should get it now because of all these names. I I actually think from that game, Moyes would be a, a more a bigger fit because they they go. Well, if you brought Moyes in and put him next, put him as the assistant. That would be a better fit than some of the names I've heard. Some of the some of the names that I'm here mm. you're hearing linked with it just don't seem to fit in with, no. with anything that we no. want as, as fans. And, and it, it's a it's a it's a it's a hard one for them. I'll give them that. It's a very hard yeah. one for yeah, them because there aren't the names out there that would satisfy us as fans. And a lot of people now will look at Duncan and go, oh oh that you know is he is he asking questions? What I would think is interesting. I'm not. Saying this should happen is, imagine you had Dunk as your figurehead as your manager, and you put some top class people around them and, a, and an, exp- an experienced assistant. And I'm, yeah, I'm not that. not saying that should happen. I'm just mm. I'm just I'm be just saying, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Well, I said that to Baz on Saturday. I thought there was a time in the game where he needed someone next to him to go Dunk. We need to make well, this. Maybe he did but, though. But yeah, you know what I mean. But I think going forward, if he was to stay, I think he has to have that experience. I just we said this last week. We are, and you know, people go, "This is nonsense." We are a particular kind of fan. We yeah. we we respond to some things, and we don't respond to other things. The things we don't respond to are probably things that people are like. Oh, that they're the things you should love about football. Now, we it's not even to do with like what we wear as a club. We almost don't want football to move on as Evertonians, yeah. and that's got nothing to do with trophies. It's it's just what we enjoy. We enjoy football played at a certain speed with a certain amount of aggression. And what I was made up about Saturday was it proved that there still is there's still room for that because the game wasn't stop start. It wasn't mm. there wasn't fouls all over the place. Did we have two players booked? I think mm. so, yeah. I think Richarlison and, and Dean got booked. For, Richarlison got booked for not. Neither yeah, he won yeah, the ball on yeah. the replays. Won Richarlison the... got booked. I think Snyder got may have got booked. And I think Dean may have got booked. Yeah. So there wasn't bookings all over the gaff. And yet we had more tackles than anyone's had in the last 10 years, which probably would have been the same. They had two bookings. You know, an average amount of tackles for a game, you know, 15 years ago. Mm. We, we won a particular kind of football. And I look at the people linked with the job and I'm just like, have you not learned anything? Mm. You know, I know, I know. People go, yeah, but it's a, you've got to have all, all the right things. I, I don't know. I don't know. Because like you just said, they're the big, one of the biggest cheers of the day was when Holgate's tackle yeah. on the halfway line. Yeah, and that was I just, a proper. It was a great tackle, that. but you know that. Well, let's go back to you said that's what Everton fans don't really appreciate this passing from the back and the, all that. Like, we like have it. you noticed let's, he didn't do it on Saturday once? Let's not kid no. ourselves. Got the ball forward. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. We do not like. No. Watching tippy tappy foot. We don't mind watching other people do it and going, but as match goers, we don't like that. As Dunk said on your interview, hybrid football. Hybrid fo- yeah. You do yeah. what's right to win you a game of football. Too. And on Saturday, we, <laughs> on Saturday we did. Nobody did this year. On yeah. Saturday we did what's right. The first goal was a lovely little goal. The second goal, we and the third goal, we pushed we them to make them mistakes and then and then took it from there. Yeah. We've done what we've needed to Liverpool do. Liverpool fans don't like tippy tappy. No, they don't. It's this city, it's, it's who we thing, are yeah. in this city. It's aggression. That. We like Liverpool. Are, aggression. Liverpool are, are brilliant at mixing stuff up. They're fast. And Leicester, look at Leicester. Yeah. Leicester are having loads of success and yet they banged long balls to Vardy. Vardy. One of his goals yesterday Can't was a big league. long ball and he finished it brilliantly. They won the league by drink we water. Yeah, bang we want, the you want what, AC Milan, one of the greatest AC Milan sides in the 90s with Van Basten. It was back to front as quickly as you can and do the damage in the final third. At the end of the day, look at the look at when last Wednesday mm. we got done by three long yeah. balls. Yeah. But, and they're going to be what, they're going to be probably unfortunately what, champions. And you know what though, Martinez's first season was was the perfect hybrid system. Mm. It had the steel yeah. and the organisation of Moise's team, and it had the finesse of Barkley, of what he wanted Ron. with Barkley, with Ron. Lukaku, with uh, Delafeu at times. But yeah. Alice, it had the perfect combination. Mm. And when he started to strip the organisation away from yeah. it and say, actually, I don't want him. Um, I don't want this down at the back anymore. But, you know, 700 doing, passes. I want, I want John Stones doing this. And actually, don't forget as well, John Stones was a much better player when he had a bleeding headband around his head, <laughs> blood dripping from his, yeah. head, and his head against Newcastle, roaring to our fans to when he was when he was doing cloak turns and telling our fans to be quiet. Because they get, they get 
overcome with what you're supposed yeah. to be like instead of remembering what they are. And this is when people come, people of a certain age, maybe they're younger than us, and they look at the Moise era and they have disdain for it. And it's like, ah, oh, you should be this and you should be that. Not being funny. When we had Moyes, some of the years, and we used to go out second half and we were 1 0 down, and the whole of the half would be in the opposition half, going to the Garden Street. Just going, and you knew it was coming mm. because the pace that we played at yeah. was just relentless, 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 yeah. and that's what we enjoy. Don't get you know, don't give us something we don't want because no. what will happen is what happened with the last day. Michael Silva has been completely forgotten now because you look at that performance and go, we didn't do that once under him, didn't do that once under him. We barely did it under Cumin. We we you know, do it sometimes mm. we did it under Allardyce, but it wasn't warm and fluffy, so it was a bit different. And as I say, Mart the Martin's first season was almost a perfect hybrid of what we want. What we want as a football team. He, he just went too far. Turn the ball forward and it quicker. Just makes so so much of a difference. It's well, you just don't, you don't want it tapping, passed around yeah, at the back. Don't forget Martin as his first or, season though as well. You had James McCarthy jumping in. You had yeah. <laughs> Gareth Barry. Barry yeah. He had full backs moving forward. Mm. You had you didn't have the culture centre back to mm. pass it round. You had Jags and Distan who, when the opportunity was on, they were playing diagonals. Mm. That's what we enjoyed. That was almost like the perfect season for us as fans, and that's what, and we fit and for the football. It all we all responded. It was something Moyes could never have because he never yeah. had maybe the money and he never had the centre forward yeah. to have Lukaku to do a bit of both. So I think that's what it's got to tell the board is. That's the template. That's the template. Yeah. The manager who comes in might want to play a certain style, but if he doesn't get the players going out and doing that for us, yeah. the fans are then just going to go. Here yeah. we go. And there we said we this about Michael Silver as well. It's the other side, it's what dunk the passion injected into it. I, I've said for ages, I'm not asked what the co-op stuff, it doesn't ask me. It's just too much of a distraction to actually remember. Sometimes we look at them and forget that actually we are very like you said, we are very we are very similar to them. Oh, yeah. We are we all live in a lot of us live, I mean some of us do. We share the city, some of us. We we have the same traits mm. of what we want from football and they they look their style has got them flying like you just said Leicester and sometimes we look at them and go we don't want that why don't we want it because it's cop eye behaviour and it's basically you saying yeah but that's the way we play it yeah that's the way we play it that's what we like go back to AT Barcelona to... we've caused all this stuff in it when no, the it's, whole... it's, it's not the, that's I know, that... I'm what just saying the way is, everyone wants to try it's and play a rise like in people selling you what should what, yeah. what's right and what's wrong yeah that's what it is that's the, and people go and well, go if you go this way it'll give you um, an XG of uh, you know this and an XG of that. Shove your XG up your ass, because those things don't matter when it comes to football. XG doesn't win your games of football. It doesn't. What wins your games of football is passion, aggression, organisation, and having someone who can put the ball in the back of the net. Those other things don't matter. Stats only get you so far. You need that. You need to be tipped over by yeah. having the aggression and having have everything else, and that needs to come from the sidelines. You need a manager who can go in at half time, and if he has to throw. The, yeah. the cutlery at yeah, yeah, he does. If, or he'll go up to you and have a word, did you? But yeah. it can't just be this. Cannot be going, get, getting a board and going through 87 pieces of paper mm. and getting that into your brain. At the end they of get the overcoached day. a lot too much. They get Big overcoached. At the end of the day, all I'll say is it's Saturday just showed that if you actually get organised and work hard, you can be in the top yeah. four or five of this league. And that's, that's not difficult. And if Everton given the talent of squad they've got. And I've said this all season and people have laughed at me at times and gone, are you sure? I don't know whether we have got a good squad. We have got a good squad. It's not brilliant, but it's a good squad and it's better than a lot of teams. If we got organised and worked hard, then the quality we have in our squad would be a lot of teams. If we'd have played like that against Norwich, Norwich. Sheffield United, teams like that at home, we'd have battered them all. In the top five, no? We'd have battered <laughs> them all. But, but that listen, it happened Saturday and it was great. Uh, like you say, Chelsea played played their part. They played well as well, um, but it's about work rate for Everton yeah. now. And, and they've the players have set the bar as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. they shouldn't be dropping below that at any time now. And if they do, then different players need to come in and get up to that standard. Because mm. so, you won't be one. Well, I mean, Dunk, you're not gonna you're gonna you're gonna work hard for him, aren't you? He's not gonna accept anything else. No. So that's why he, he's key in the deciding yeah. of the next yeah, manager. He's, definitely. And, he's got to stay on, by the way, whoever we do, if he stays or whoever um, does come in, he's got to stay either as an assistant at least, in my opinion, now, mm. if, if he doesn't get the job. Yeah. I think Saturday proved that 
he's a, he's a big asset for the for the club mm. and, yeah. and and the, and the coaching staff. Definitely. Obviously, we don't know what's gone on with the last the last regime, but um, it doesn't seem like he's probably have, had as much input as he should have, really, mm. because he's been like he said on your interview, he's been in the game for a long, long time. Yeah, sure. More than some of these coaches have been alive. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So he's been marginalised. Simple as that. He has been. We, we can say it now, can't we? Daddy, and you know what? If you can get an extra 10%, 20% out of Don McCarvalu and your Tom Davis, you use them. If you're clever now and you come in as a manager, you use them. Like if you're having a bad time and your manager's a bit not really that type of character, you need someone to give them a bit of a bollocking. Mm. There's let your them man. do it. <laughs> Mourinho would let them do it, wouldn't he? So there you go. Big thanks to Steve. Let us know what you thought in the comments section below. Did you enjoy the game? Did you love seeing Duncan's celebrations? Or did you think, mm, or. Are you just relieved? You're absolutely relieved. And what do you think about giving him the manager's job? Or do you think he should be used as an assistant or a coach? Let us know in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. If you want more videos, join us on Patreon. See you later.